Welcome to Electron Line. Another strategy is to take the function that's in the frequency domain and write it as the sum of fractions using what we call the method of partial fractions. Which other words, this particular example can be written as follows. This can be written as a over s plus b over s plus 2 plus c over s plus 3. And now we can go ahead, if we knew what a, b, and c were, we can go ahead and find the inverse Laplace transform and write the function in terms of the time domain. But first we need to find out what a, b, and c are equal to. In order to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to write all of those over the same common denominator like we have over here. Which means we're going to multiply a times s plus 2 and s plus 3. We're going to multiply b times s and s plus 3. And we're going to multiply c times s and s plus 2. It looks as follows. So this can now be written as a times s plus 2 times s plus 3. And of course that's all going to be over the denominator of s times s plus 2 times s plus 3. Notice when we cancel these out, we get back what we started with, plus b times s times s plus 3 divided by s times s plus 2 times s plus 3. And again, when you cancel out the s plus 3 and the s, you get, with, you get b over s plus 2. And finally, that's plus c times s times s plus 2 over s times s plus 2 times s plus 3. Now, will that allow us to find what a, b, and c are equal to? You bet you. How? Well, as follows. Notice when we multiply these out and write over a common denominator, we'll get something that we can equate this to this. And we'll do this as follows. This will be a times s squared plus 5s plus 6 plus b times s squared plus 3s plus c times s squared plus 2s all over the same common denominator of s times s plus 2 times s plus 3. I just write it like this to make it a little bit quicker, realizing though that this would be three separate fractions, or you can say that this equals our original fraction here. Let me write it down as s squared plus 12 divided by s times s plus 2 times s plus 3. Now notice on the right side we have an a s squared, we have a b s squared, and we have a c s squared, which means on the left side we have a 1 s squared, which means that 1 must equal a plus b plus c. So the coefficient of the s squared here must equal the sum of the coefficients of the s squared over there. In other words, 1 is equal to a plus b plus c. Next, we do not have an s term on the left side, but we have a 5as, a 3bs, and a 2cs. That means that 0 must equal 5a plus 3b plus 2c. And finally, we have a single term right here, a single constant term, 12. We have a 6a plus, well, we don't have any constant terms here, so that means that 12 must equal to 6a. That allows us to find a, b, and c. We just have to solve those simultaneously. In other words, a is equal to 2 when I divide both sides by 6. When I plug that into the other two equations, I end up with these two equations. We have 1 is equal to 2 plus b plus c. In other words, negative 1 equals b plus c. Or I can say that b is equal to negative 1 minus c. And then I can plug it into my third equation. I can say that 0 is equal to, instead of a, I use 2, so 5 times 2, which is 10 plus 3b, but remember b can be written as minus 1 minus c, that would be plus 3 times minus 1 minus c, 
and then we have plus 2c. Simplifying that a little bit more, we get 0 is equal to 10 minus 3 minus 3c plus 2c. Minus 3c plus 2c is minus 1c. Bring that over on the other side. I get c is equal to 10 minus 3, which is 7. Well, if c is equal to 7 and b is minus 1 minus c, that means that b is equal to minus 1 minus 7 or minus 8, and a is equal to 2. I now have my three letters, a, b, and c. I can plug that back into my equation over here. We can say that the function in the frequency domain is equal to a divided by s, and a is equal to 2, plus b divided by s plus 2. Well, b is minus 8, so let's make this a minus. Minus 8 over s plus 2. And finally, I have c, which is 7, so plus 7 divided by s plus 3. Now I go to the table where I can see the transfer between the functions in the time domain and the functions in the frequency domain, and I can do the inverse Laplace transform. So now I can say that the inverse Laplace transform of f of s is equal to the inverse Laplace transform of what I have now, which I have obtained by using the partial fractions technique. So it would be 2 divided by s minus 8 divided by s plus 2 and plus 7 divided by s plus 3. So finding the inverse Laplace transform of each fraction as follows, then this would be equal to 2 times the step function minus 8, and here we have a delay, so we have an e to the minus 2t times the step function, and uh, plus 7 times e to the minus 3t times the step function. Remember that u of t is simply a step function when time is equal to 0. Coming from negative 0 to time equals 0, we have a step function of equal to 1, so this becomes 1 when time equals 0 and on to infinity. We can simply factor that out, so this can be written as 2 minus 8 e to the minus 2t plus 7 e to the minus 3t all multiply times 1 or times u of t. In some cases, they simply replace u of t by 1 and they just leave this as the final answer. So here we have a good example of how to use the, the concept of partial fractions to take something that looks like this, which cannot be found in a transfer table, into writing it as three separate fractions using the partial fractions technique. And that's how that's done.